In the previous slide series, we examined choosing statistical tests when we were looking at one sample. In this slide series, we're going to take a look at tests with, which deal with two or more samples. In particular, we're going to take a look at two more sample tests for parametric data types. And the tests we're going to cover are we're going to have a look at independent sample t-test, dependent sample t-test, and analysis of variance. The mathematics that sit behind these different tests are very similar, but in practice we refer to them as different processes. In the next slide series, so that's slide series 3b, we're going to deal with two more sample tests for non-parametric data types. So previously um, in one sample test we were examining whether a sample was part of a population or not. With two sample tests, we are looking at something slightly different. We want to compare whether two groups have some sort of trait that are sufficiently similar um, that they do or do not belong to the same population. Um, so is the mean for two groups sufficiently large that we can say that they are from two separate populations? The t-test um, actually assesses whether the means of two groups are statistically different from each other and this analysis is appropriate when you want to compare the means of two groups. Now by t-test we're not referring to the t-test that we looked at before, Okay, we're actually looking at what we call independent sample t-tests. Now the assumptions um, behind an independent sample t-test Okay, there are a number of different assumptions, there are five. The first one is that um, the dependent variable um, is interval or ratio in measurement. The second one is that random sampling techniques have been used to collect the data from the population. The third one is that there is an independence in the observation, so it, it is assumed that the response that is made by a participant is not influenced by other participants. Fourth one is obviously the rule of the normal distribution. Okay, it's assumed that the populations from which the samples are drawn are normally distributed. Um, the, dis the distribution, of course, of your sample scores, you can examine them by using a histogram, and that can tell you um, and show you what your um, distribution curve ends up looking like. Um, it also assumes um, homogeneity of variance. Okay, this means that the population from which the sample has been taken, um, they have equal variance. So for example, um, in the population we would expect the distribution of income values um, for men and women to have equal variance and the shape of the distribution to be similar. Um, there is a statistical test um, which allows you to test for a violation of this assumption and it is called the Levine test of equality of variance. So as with all tests, you need to set up um, your hypotheses, your null hypothesis is that there's no difference in the mean between two groups. Our alternative is that there is a difference between the mean um, between the two groups. Um, in the example that we just talked about, which um, was about mean weekly income and gender, our null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the mean weekly income of men and women. Our dependent variable is income and our independent variable is age. So that being um, level of income is dependent on age. Now, as mentioned earlier, we also test for the homogeneity of variance. Okay, and for that, we also need to um, have a quick look at our hypothesis as well before we get started. Um, the Levine test is also referred to as the F test. Okay, F test for sample variance. Um, our null hypothesis um, in this case is that the two groups are drawn from the same population and share the same variance and distribution. Um, and we, it's important to actually have a look at the descriptive stats that are generated to see what the standard deviations of the two groups are to start with. So the Levine test um, for our example is that there is um, no difference in the variance of weekly income for men and women. So with those two bits of information, we can arm ourselves and go off and actually do the, uh, do the test. And we can see here, we can see um, an output. This is taken from SPSS. You can use any statistical package you like to generate this. Um, but this actually shows us what comes out. So the first stage of an independent sample t-test is to run the Levine's test to establish if the assumption of homogeneity of variance has been violated. Um, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the variance of weekly income uh, distribution for men and women. 
the Levine statistic is denoted by the letter F, as you can see in the blue highlighted circle. Um, in this example, we can see that the F value is uh, 0.351 and the significance level P is 0.554. With a significance level greater than 0.05, we can accept the null hypothesis for Levine's test and assume that the variances are equal. So having established that um, we that the assumption has not been violated, the next stage is to then determine the null hypothesis for the independent sample t-test. Um, now depending on the outcome of the Levine's test, we look at either equal variances assumed test or the equal variances not assumed test. Um, our HO, uh, so our null hypothesis, is that men and women have the same usual weekly income. And we know from our Levine's test that equal variance can be assumed. Um, so we can examine the equal variance assumed results of the t-test. So in our example, um, our null hypothesis is that men and women have the same usual weekly income. We know from our Levine's test that equal variance can be assumed, so we can examine the equal variance assumed results of the t-test. Okay, you can see that in the first blue circle. Okay, we have equal variance assumed and equal variance not assumed. Um, if we go across with the equal variance um, assumed uh, row to our t statistic, we can see that here t equals 1.970 with 4056 degrees of freedom and a significance level of p equaling 0.049. With a significance level that is less than 0.05, okay, we cannot accept the null hypothesis and we must conclude that there is a statistical difference in the mean usual gross weekly income between men and women. So knowing this, so there we have a difference. Okay, what does that actually mean to say that the averages for two groups are statistically different? Now there are actually four possible outcomes of the averages of for two groups being statistically different. The first is that um, they have the same distribution and the same mean. The second is that they have the same distribution and different mean. Third is that they have different distribution and the same mean. And the fourth is that they have both a different distribution and a different mean. And each of these situations look different and tell very different stories. So here we can see what we mean by same distribution and same mean. So the curve looks exactly the same here. In this example, we can see that we have exactly the same distribution, so the curves look exactly the same, but we have a different mean, and so we have the curves not superimposed on each other, but actually looking different. Here we can see that we actually have, for our data results, we have, they're both operating on the same mean, so they're sort of superimposed on each other but the actual shape of the distribution is different. Okay, you can see one um, is flatter than the other. And with this one here, we can see that um, we have both a different distribution and a different mean. So the curves are not really that similar to each other. We can see one is flatter, one is a more peaky, and the means are also in different places, so they can't be super imposed on each other. Now when we're actually discussing the results of our t-test, we usually sort of present it in, 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 in a sort of particular format. We state the null hypotheses and the purpose of the test. We then report the results for Levine and standard deviations. We then select the correct t-test, so whether that's um, equal variance is assumed or equal variance not assumed. We report the significance and the means. And we discuss whether the differences are what you would expect. Now we have another type of um, t-test, it is called the dependent or um, paired sample t-test. Now the dependent sample um, t-test is used where test data are collected from the same participants at two points in time, so they are dependent samples. In the previous example we were looking at independent samples, Okay, so they are collected from different people, so they are not uh, dependent on each other, they are collected from different people. Sometimes however we collect um, survey data um, 
in a longitudinal survey, we repeat it and we go back and we talk to the same people again, we're just talking to them at a different point in time. So in order to test our data when we're dealing with that kind of example, um, we use what we call a dependent sample t-test because obviously if um, I came and did a survey with you and I then came and did the same survey again, okay, the two samples will be dependent on each other. It is also known as repeated measures, um, so it's also appropriate to use for research data from experimental design um, as well. Now if we take an example of um, measuring somebody's IQ before tutoring and then measuring the IQ level after tutoring, um, our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in IQ level pre and post tutoring. Our alternative is that there is a difference in IQ level. Now a dependent sample t-test that we would use for this um, is interpreted in exactly the same way as our independent t-test, but um, we don't use Levine's, obviously. Now so far we have looked at situations where determining how likely it is that one sample belongs to a population in our previous slide series in 2a and 2b. And then in this slide series we've been looking at where two samples belong to a common population. However, there are often situations where we need to look at more than two samples. Okay, and this means the need to take a slightly different approach in order to find out if the samples have something in common. The approach that we use for dealing with more than two samples okay, is what we call an ANOVA, or an analysis of variance. An ANOVA is another statistical technique for comparing the mean scores of study respondents but it just differs from the t-test um, that we've just described in that it's used to compare the mean scores of three or more groups of data. Um, and it was that they're often used in um, scientific or medical, or medical experiments when treatments, processes, materials or products are being compared. So let's have a look at an example. It's thought that literacy levels is a function of gender and the length of time that is spent in education. So does gender and the length of time spent in education affect literacy levels? As with t-testing, we need to compare the sample means. Um, and in this case, obviously, we are dealing with um, three different groups. We're dealing with um, literacy level and we are dealing with gender and length of time spent in education. So therefore we're going to use an ANOVA to deal with this. First off though, we need to understand that even if all population means were identical, the sample means are unlikely to be exactly equal. Okay, there's always going to be some difference and some variation um, due to our sampling variation. So the question therefore actually becomes, are the observed differences between the sample means simply due to sampling variation or are they due to real differences in the population means? This question can't um, just be answered from the sample means. We also need to look at the variability of whatever we are measuring. The analysis of variance, um, in this we actually compare the variability between the groups, so how far, how far apart are the means to the variability within groups. How much natural variation is there in our measurements? And this is why it's called the analysis of variance. So in summary, an ANOVA measures sources of um, variation. Um, it measures this in two ways. So it measures um, the way in which groups differ internally versus the difference that is seen between them and then it compares the relative size of these two levels of variance. So it looks at variation between groups. So for each data value you look at the difference between its group mean and the overall mean. It then also looks at the variation within groups. So each data value we look at the difference between um, that value and the mean of its group. So we look at the between and the within variance. Having separated the total variation into these separate sources, so either um, within variation or between variation, we then test this with an f-test. Um, 
Now the ANOVA F test is a ratio between um, the between group variation divided by the within group variation as you can see there. If the F ratio is less than 0.05 then um, the differences between the conditions studied is regarded as statistically significant. A large F value is evidence against our null hypothesis and it, and it indicates that there is more difference between the groups than within groups. Now all ANOVAs are parametric. They, de they determine if the mean differences between conditions are significantly different from each other. That is to say um, that they determine if the difference between conditions is caused by the manipulation of the independent variable or variables. It achieves this by separating the variability that occurs within the data set to determine that which is due to the manipulation of the independent variables. Consider um, a situation where there are three or more conditions to be compared. There is a certain amount of variation present between the observed, between um, observations in the same condition and also between observations taken from different conditions. And if I separate this total variation into its independent components, which are attributable to either one source or another. Because an ANOVA is actually parametric, using uh, so using interval or ratio data, it requires that a number of assumptions are met um, in the raw data in order to be confident that the results are valid. Okay, these are firstly that the observations um, in each condition come from a normally distributed population. The second is that the conditions or treatments that um, we're looking at should not affect the variability between observations. This is also known as the um, homogeneity of variance test or the test of equal variance. That is to say that the standard deviations of the population condition should be more or less the same. So recall the homogeneity of variance assumptions um, um, are only necessary in uh, within subject designs or partially within subject designs. Um, um, sphericity. This assumption concerns equal covariance um, of uh, error measures and is required in within subject designs. In order for the assumptions to be upheld, the appropriate test um, needs to be a p-value of uh, greater than 0 0.05. Um, the ANOVA is very robust to violations in the assumptions of normality. However, violations in the homogeneity of variance can be more serious and these are likely to cause the data to appear to be more significant than it actually is. Now, types of ANOVAs. Um, if we think about our example of whether the IQ of respondents depends on um, which four types of tutoring they have received, our IQ is our factor or our independent treatment variable, and the different tutoring levels, the different tutoring um, equals our levels. In this example, there is only one factor IQ, so our analysis um, of the effect of tutoring um, on IQ is what we call a one way ANOVA. If we add in another factor, say the length of tutoring, okay, that would make it a two-way ANOVA and so on. So the more factors you add in, um, the more ways you compute your ANOVA. So firstly, let's um, consider a one-way ANOVA. So the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the population means um, of the different levels of factor A, which is the only factor, and the alternative is that the means are not the same. For a two-way ANOVA, our null hypothesis, our possible null hypothesis are one, that there is no difference in the means of factor A, two, that is there is no difference in the means of factor B, and three, that there is no interaction between factors A and B. The alternative hypothesis for case one and two is that the means are not equal, and the alternative um, hypothesis for case three is that there is an interaction between A and B. Now the ANOVA has told us that there is a significant difference um, between uh, at least two of the three conditions. Okay, So we can therefore reject the null hypothesis that the mean of the three conditions are the same. Um, however, in this hypothetical uh, situation where we, where our ANOVA, our our ANOVA test has come out and told us that 
um, that there is a significant difference between at least two of our three conditions. Um, what we don't know yet is we don't know if there is a significant difference between um, the control condition and either both of the two other conditions um, or if there's a significant difference between the two conditions at all. Um, visual inspection of the sample uh, test will actually tell us something but in most cases um, we need to actually do a formal um, follow-up or post hoc analysis to determine um, these factors. Now there are a number of different um, and of a post hoc uh, tests that you can use. Um, they all have their own properties and they all have their own advantages and disadvantages um, and here we have listed um, some of the most commonly used. So we have the least um, significant difference or the um, LSD t-test um, and that is where we are comparing three conditions. Okay, the test calculates um, a least significant difference um, that is significant between any two conditions and this calculation is based on the well-known t-test. Um, the output gives each pair of means um, their mean difference, standard area and significant value which is the p-value. Um, the 95% confidence interval is also shown and this can be used to indicate how big the difference is. Um, the Scheif test okay, is when we are dealing with four or more conditions um, in between subjects and either unequal numbers or of subjects per conditions or there are serious doubts about the assumptions of normality and or of equal variance. So we use this for different reasons. Um, we also have the um, Bonferrari um, which is used when there are more than four conditions in within subject designs, so not in between subjects. That's um, Scheif. We deal with use this one for uh, within subject designs, and um, we then have two keys uh, significance test. Okay, and this is used when there are four or more conditions with in between subjects and equal numbers of subjects per condition, and there are no known problems. Um, with the assumptions. So lots of different versions that we can use and it depends on what kind of data you are dealing with and what assumptions uh, or properties lie behind those different types of data.